Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Simple and Easy Zoology. In this video tutorial, I am going to talk about one more type of membrane transport that is active transport. So in the last video, I already discussed about the passive transport. So active transport is just opposite of passive transport. According to passive transport, it is a movement of molecule from a region of its high concentration to a region of its low concentration without expenditure of any energy, isn't it? But in the case of active transport, it is a movement of molecule from a region of its low concentration to a region of its high concentration with the expenditure of energy. For example, take two region A and B which is separated by plasma membrane. Say of about 20 molecules of sodium ion is present in region A and 2 molecules of sodium ion is present in region B. So according to active transport, sodium ion will move from region B to region A that is from its low concentration region to its high concentration region with the expenditure of energy. So who will provide the energy? Cell itself will provide the energy in the form of a ATP molecule. What do you mean by ATP? Adenosine triphosphate which is considered as energy currency of a cell, isn't it? So ATP molecule structure it consists of nitrogen base that is adenine, sugar, ribosugar and 3-phosphate. So adenine combines with ribosugar to form adenosine and triphosphate. So the name came adenosine triphosphate. So this ATP is used for the active transport and the cell will spend of about 40% of cellular energy for the active transport. Why the cell should use so much of energy for the active transport? Is it that essential? Yes, because most of the molecules are transported via active transport only. Example, collection of iodine in the thyroid gland, reabsorption of nutrients by the cells of the digestive tract, reabsorption of sodium by the renal tubules, etc. In all these cases, the movement of molecules takes place via active transport only. So the main thing that is required for the active transport is energy and membrane protein. So energy in the form of ATP. And what do you mean by membrane protein? Membrane proteins are the proteins which is present in the membrane, isn't it? So the membrane protein which helps in the active transport, they are collectively called as pumps. It is called so because it pumps the molecule from low concentration region to high concentration region with the expenditure of energy and it can be compared to water pump. So what water pump will do? It will pump the water from low region to high region against the gravitational force with the expenditure of energy that is electrical energy. Similarly, these pumps will pump the molecules or the substances from a region of its low concentration to a region of its high concentration with the expenditure of energy. There are mainly two types of active transport, primary active transport and secondary active transport. We will know about it one by one. First one primary active transport. In primary active transport, it uses ATP as a direct source of energy for the transport of molecule against the concentration gradient. And the best example for that is sodium potassium pump or sodium potassium ATPs. And it is a very important pump in the animal cell. As the name indicate, sodium potassium pump, it will help in the movement of sodium and potassium in and out of the cell. Naturally, the concentration of sodium ion will be more outside the cell when it is compared to inside the cell. Similarly, the concentration of potassium will be more inside the cell when it is compared to outside the cell. So say for about 1 sodium ion is present inside the cell, then 20 sodium ion will be present outside the cell, 20 times or more. On the other hand, say of about 1 potassium is present outside the cell, then 40 potassium ion will be present inside the cell, that is 40 times more inside. Okay, And this difference in the ion concentration is maintained by sodium potassium pump. We will see how exactly sodium potassium pump works. It works in a cyclic manner. Imagine in the first step, sodium potassium pump is open to inside of the cell. In this form, this pump has affinity towards the sodium ion. As a result, three sodium ion will go and binds to the pump because this sodium potassium pump has three sites for the attachment of a sodium ion. 
So once the sodium ion binds to the pump, ATP hydrolysis takes place. What do you mean by ATP hydrolysis? ATP in the presence of water, it splits into ADP and PI and the energy is released in this process. So this energy which is released during the ATP hydrolysis is used for the movement of sodium and potassium ions. So this phosphate go and binds to the pump and this process is called as phosphorylation. Now the pump is said to be phosphorylated. So as a result of phosphorylation there will be change in the structure of pump and the pump is reorient itself and it will open to outside or extracellular set. Okay. So in this form the pump does not have affinity for sodium. As a result three sodium ion is released out. In its outward facing form, this pump has affinity towards the potassium ion. As a result, two potassium ion will come and binds to the pump because it has two binding sites for the potassium ion. Okay. So as soon as the potassium ion come and binds to the pump, it triggers a release of a phosphate group. So due to the release of phosphate group, there will be change in the structure of the pump. And it attains its original form. That is it will face inward or inside the cell. Okay. So in this inward facing form it does not have affinity towards the potassium ion. So the potassium ion is released into the cytoplasm. Okay. So that is how exactly the movement of sodium ion potassium ion takes place with the help of sodium potassium ATP or sodium potassium pump. And thereby it maintains the concentration of sodium and potassium ion in and out of the cell. So apart from maintaining sodium and potassium concentration, this sodium potassium pump also establishes voltage or electrical gradient. So what do you mean by electrical gradient? I hope you know the meaning of concentration gradient, isn't it? So concentration gradient means difference in the concentration in and out of the cell. Similarly, electrical gradient means difference in the charge in and out of the cell. So if you consider this example, in a cycle for every 3 sodium ion moving out, only 2 potassium ion is entering in, isn't it? So 3 sodium ion is moving out here, but only 2 potassium ion is entering in. So it results in establishment of negative charge inside when it is compared to outside. So it is nothing but the electrical gradient. So sodium potassium pump also establish voltage or the electrical gradient. Okay. So this is all about primary active transport and the next one is secondary active transport. In the secondary active transport it uses electrochemical gradient or electrical gradient which is established due to primary active transport as a source of energy for the movement of molecule against the concentration gradient. Okay. So in the primary active transport directly ATP is used as a source of energy is at it. On the other hand in the secondary active transport the energy which is stored in the electrical gradient is used as a source of energy. Okay. So if you consider this example there exists an electrical gradient due to sodium and potassium pump isn't it. So sodium ion concentration is more outside when it is compared to inside. So it is nothing but the electrical gradient or sodium gradient here. So if you imagine a sodium channel here, imagine this as a sodium channel. Obviously what happens? Sodium ion from a region of its high concentration, it will move to its low concentration or sodium ion will move down its concentration gradient, isn't it? So during which the energy is released here and this energy is used by the secondary active transport for the movement of other molecule against the concentration gradient. Okay. So imagine this. This as a sodium channel and sodium ion is more here outside the cell when it is compared to inside the cell. Okay. So due to the presence of this sodium channel, sodium ion is moving along the concentration gradient. Okay. So during which the energy is released here. And this energy is used by the secondary active transport for the movement of other molecule. So here the molecule is glucose. Okay. So here the movement of sodium is coupled with the 
glucose movement against its concentration gradient. So the energy for the glucose movement is from the sodium gradient. If the molecules to be transported move in the same direction, it is called as symporter. So if the molecule move in the opposite direction, it is called as antiporter. So in symporter, both molecules will move inside the cell. In the case of antiporter, one will move outside the cell and one molecule will move inside the cell. Such movement is called as antiporter. Okay. Anyhow, both in symporter and antiporter, the movement is due to electrochemical gradient. Okay. So that is regarding secondary active transport. So that is all about active transport. In the next video, I am going to talk about bulk transport. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.